and thanks for joining us. First, your average film set is packed to the brim with producers, actors and technicians. But this way of working is, for the time being, no longer possible. The coronavirus pandemic has prompted TV and film professionals to seek advice on how to keep rolling and stay safe. While many sets remain empty in the United States, shoots are ramping back up in a number of other countries, including here in France. Peter O'Brien has this. A change of scene. With a small crew all wearing masks, actors at a safe distance from each other, and the director and script supervisor divided by a sheet of plastic, this is what working on a TV set now looks like in France. On a quelqu'un de toute façon qui est sur le plateau pour nous dire ah ta ne vous approchez pas trop ah ta pas de l'acteur il a pas son masque puisqu'on l'enlève avant de tourner donc euh, non on s'habitue assez vite. To make the characters seem closer together, a bit of movie magic is required. Je filme beaucoup plus en longue focale, ça écrase les comédiens la distance qu'il y a entre les deux et on a l'impression qu'ils sont à moins d'un mètre. Safety precautions have slowed down production of this French TV show so much that they've resorted to six-day weeks. The writers have even redrafted the story to include the virus in the plot. For all the scenes of proximity, of intimacy, the scenes of bagarre, where people are very close to each other, all that has been reviewed, re-écrit, no more kisses on the antenna, until new order. A physician who's developed new guidelines for television networks in the UK says handling the virus is especially complicated because many TV workers are freelancers. You can't just look at your own, to use a COVID term, bubble uh, and think we will do all of this within uh, our company bubble and it'll be fine because people are moving in and out of your bubble uh, to other productions with other companies. As studios tentatively get back to work across the world, some big projects are taking on the challenge. James Cameron and his crew have been through quarantine in New Zealand to restart filming for Avatar 2. And Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible 7 plans to start shooting outdoor scenes in September. The arts is one of the sectors that suffered greatly from the outbreak of the coronavirus, with theatres closed and festivals cancelled in France since mid-March. Although the doors of most venues remain shut for now, there's some relief for artists who can start rehearsals again. Let's take a look. After months apart, dancers at the National Ballet in Marseille are finally back rehearsing together, a reunion under tight restrictions. Dancers must stay inside this four-metre squared box, for example. It's one of several new rules members of the ballet troupe are having to get used to. We're in a very particular particular especially for the work that we do, that is the dance, which involves the collaboration of the body and the interaction. To be in the studio, to see the contact at distance, it creates a liberty that makes you feel good. During lockdown, dancers kept in contact and trained together via video calls. Each one tried to keep in shape at home as best they could. It's very important if you stop for two months, after it's really difficult to find the form. This orchestra in Cannes has also started rehearsing again. Despite the new conditions, musicians are relieved to be back doing what they love. I never imagined that it would be on the 11th of June. Pexiglass separates those playing wind instruments, while others are required to wear masks. Musicians also have to keep 1.5 meters apart, which has provided some complications. For me, it's not very disagreeable because it makes an orchestra a bit italy, but for them, it's for the ear because it's really in the music. We listen as much as we play. The first concert is on the 21st of June with just 80 spectators. A huge relief for the arts, but it will still be a while until things get fully back to normal. Next to the world's largest digital arts centre that's opened in a former submarine base in the southern French town of Bordeaux. It's cavernous chambers and dazzling visual effects with exhibitions dedicated to Gustave Klimt and Paul Klee are exactly what we need after nearly three months in confinement. Our reporters have been to check out Le Bassin de Lumière. Bringing austere cement walls to life. 
specks of gold, pastels twinkling reflections. The masterpieces of Gustav Klimt turned into a multimedia show. This Klimt exhibit has already been shown at the Atelier des Lumières in Paris and at the former limestone quarries at Les Lumières des Beaux de Provence. But this time, the paintings have transformed a space with a weighted history, a bunker used for World War II submarines. It was abandoned by the Germans in 1944. I I was mais surtout pour l'eau. Euh, je suis vénitien, donc euh, j'ai retrouvé un peu mon enfance et, et les reflets euh, sur l'eau, c'est quelque chose qui m'a toujours fasciné. The show was slated to open in April, but was pushed back because of the coronavirus. Even with the easing of lockdowns, creating a safe way for visitors to wander around freely, was a formidable challenge. On a travaillé sur la jauge pour que on n'ait pas plus d'un visiteur par 6 mètres carrés, ce qui est déjà très très grand et très très large. Et puis il y a du personnel qui est là pour vous accueillir et faire en sorte que les gens ne soient pas trop resserrés. Mais on fait ça aussi avec beaucoup de, de sérieux et de finesse pour que l'expérience de visite reste merveilleuse, qu'on reste dans cette espèce de moment hors du temps. A gamble and hard work that seems to be paying off. From the get-go, the first hour of the first day, visitors have been lining up. Grâce au bassin de lumière, on est plongé dans un univers pictural, mais aussi on est comme enveloppé par la musique, la lumière et les bassins d'eau. Il y a beaucoup d'espace, donc c'est vrai qu'on peut circuler assez facilement sans croiser trop de monde, et les gens respectent assez bien la distance, donc c'est vrai qu'on se sent pas oppressé et on peut profiter pleinement sans avoir l'impression d'être trop proche des gens. A remnant of German occupation of France, the submarine base of Bordeaux, has for years been a renowned cultural space, but now its docking stations have become an added plus. Pools of shimmering lights. Well, we'll leave you with an exhibition that had been due to open at Paris's Musée d'Orsay in March. It focuses on the French painter James Tussaud and shows us the high society in the 19th century. It's on until September. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.